Have you noticed that suddenly there's way too much water in your brine tank? Yeah, it's normal for there to be some water in there, but if it's more than half full, you definitely have a problem. So what could be the problem? How do you fix it? How do you go with troubleshooting the whole thing? Relax, I'm going to show you the whole thing starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now, whether you're a homeowner, a do-it-yourselfer, or a water filtration specialist, this video is for you. I'm going to explain to you all my tips and tricks on how to troubleshoot this way too much water in the brine tank situation for your water softener. By following the, um, the suggestions that I have in this video, you can definitely solve that once and for all. And by the way, these troubleshooting tips and remedies will work on any maker model of water softener. Troubleshooting your water softener is much easier if you know how it works. If you're not 100% sure, check out my YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description down below. One of the most common symptoms of a malfunctioning water softener is too much water in the brine tank. So one thing you have to kind of figure out is, does the water level stay at this high level? Or does, after it goes through a regeneration, does the water level drop and then it slowly creeps up over a period of time? So to do that, uh, what you need to do is regenerate the water softener. So if you have a clack valve water softener like this guy back here, over here, then on the far right there's a regen button. You press that, hold it down for five seconds, it's going to go through a regeneration cycle. Any water softener will have a symbol on the front for regeneration. So just go ahead, regenerate your water softener, and then after it's gone through the cycle, check back and see if the water level is still high or if it dropped after the regeneration. If it dropped after the regeneration, check it over the next two or three days and see if that water level is slowly rising up. So the first thing to check is your brine line. That's the 3 8 inch tubing that goes from your uh, brine tank where the salt is stored to the water softener control valve itself. And just make sure the connections on both ends are tight. Because the problem is, if one of those connections has become loose or was or it, if it's a new installation, it was never um, connected, uh, made tight right from the beginning, then what will happen is when it goes through its brine cycle, where it sucks the brine out of the brine tank, it won't suck it out because there's a leak there, um, a vacuum leak or an air leak if you like, but when it comes time to put more water in, it'll just keep adding more water and it'll either leak out or it, it will just um, uh, rise up until the float inside the brine tank shuts the water off. Now, a great way to test this is that you can put it through a regeneration cycle and uh, fast forward through the cycles until you get to the fill cycle. And at the fill cycle, pay close attention to this connection, especially where it connects to the float on the end here. And uh, if it's on the fill cycle and the, the water is full, so that means the float now will have stop the water from flowing into the brine tank anymore. If you see water gushing out at this end, then that tells you that uh, there's an improper connection. I just serviced uh, one recently and, uh, and it was leaking from here. It wasn't connected properly here. These are quick connect fittings on here. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that this is connected properly. So I've seen this happen quite a few times on new installations where this isn't done correctly. So there's a C-clip that looks like this. And that C-clip comes, when the system comes from the factory, already on here, okay? So you have to remove that C-clip just by pulling it off. And then inside, there's this little insert. So what you need to do is you need to put that insert into the tubing, like that. See, it's in there. And then you need to slide the whole thing in, all the way, but you'll get resistance, but Hold it tight and keep going, and then you got to push it all the way, and it locks in, and then try to pull it out. And then when you try to pull it out, you put this little C-clip in the space that's being created here. You put the C-clip in that space to hold. And that makes sure that you've got a good watertight seal to make sure that the brine can go in, but also when it wants to suck out the brine, you don't have an air leak, and it can suck the brine. So the next thing you need to check for is a salt clog at the bottom of the brine tank, you know, where you keep your salt. And so what can happen over the years is if you haven't uh, gotten right down to the bottom of that tank, and that's why I recommend once a year just run right out of salt. Even once every few years, run right out of salt and just clean up whatever's at the bottom. But if you haven't done that, you've kept it very full, 
that salt has dissolved and has formed into a big salt big salt cube or big salt block at the bottom of that brine tank. And what that's doing is preventing water or brine from being sucked into the brine well, this is the brine well, sucked into the brine well through these slots and up through to your water softener. And then when it goes to put more water in, sometimes it gets through here, but, but it can't put more water in because again, this has all been closed off by that salt clog. So what you need to do is you need to get rid of that salt clog. And I've got a great YouTube video that shows you exactly how to do that. I'll put a link in the description down below. So the next thing to check is a clogged drain line. So your water softener, when it goes through its regeneration cycle, it, it shoots water to the drain, right? Well, as it's doing that, when it's in the brine cycle, there's a slow trickle of water going to the drain, and that's what creates the suction to draw the brine out of the brine tank and into the water softener. If that drain line is clogged or kinked or frozen in the winter time, the water softener won't, won't go through that regeneration cycle. It won't suck out the brine, uh, but it will still try to keep adding more water to the brine tank. And that's where you, when you can get that high water level. So you can determine if this is the problem just by putting it into a regeneration cycle. So normally on a regeneration cycle, the first uh, cycle is backwash or something like that. And water's flowing quickly to the drain. So if you hear water flowing quickly to the drain, that's not the problem. But if you hear absolutely nothing, you know, crickets, that tells you that there's a problem. So what you need to do is unclog, un unkink, or thaw out that drain line and you're back in business. So the next thing to check is your drain line flow control. So you can find that attached to your water softener. So basically you just follow the drain line back to your water softener and then just undo this. It's usually an elbow or something like that. On the clack water softeners, you'll have a, an E-clip like this that holds the drain line flow control in place. Now, before you do this, before you disconnect this, what you would need to do is you need to bypass the water softener and start a regeneration cycle to release all the pressure and then undo the C-clip and undo the drain line flow control. Now, if your drain line goes up, you're going to have a fair amount of water leaking out of that because it's going to be draining back down. So make sure you put a little bucket or something like that underneath when you undo this. So your drain line flow control is that little button that's in the middle of this. So you can remove that and just make sure that something isn't clogging that. I've seen debris that uh, has gone through uh, like very fine stones that have accumulated in there and have actually clogged that. So all you do is clean it, reattach it, and you're back in business. So the next thing to check is your brine well, the brine well inside your brine tank. So what you need to do is open up the cap and make sure there's no debris inside there that's constricting the float. So on a normal basis, the float is operational inside your brine well. So water flows in through here and as the water accumulates, the float will lift up and shut off the flow. But if if the, the cap from the brine well was left off for a period of time and maybe someone threw, when they were filling up the salt, the water fell into the brine well and accumulated in the bottom of the brine well and restricted this float from operating properly, then um, often water can't come out or go in and water accumulates and then you get that high water in the brine tank. So to fix that problem, what you need to do is you need to remove the salt, you need to remove the brine well and the float, and you need to clean it all out and then put it all back together. Once you've got it all back together, make sure that the cap stays on top of the brine well. If you don't have a cap, at least make a temporary cap with tape or something like that, because salt will fall inside and will cause that problem. And by the way, if you're considering and investing in a new water softener for your family, I encourage you to check out our websites, either watereastore.com in the U.S. or watereastore.ca in Canada. We have discount pricing and free shipping on our Hume water softeners. I'll put a link in the description down below. So next up, you need to check the brine line flow control. So if you follow that brine line that comes from the brine tank and goes up to the valve of the, the water softener, there's a connection up there. So if you, again, if you have a clack valved uh, water softener, you'll have, this is the connection here where the uh, brine line um, connects to the, the water softener and it's held on by an E-clip that looks something like this. So when you remove this, look inside here. So you can see there's a very small orifice, a very small hole inside here. So often I've seen it happen when it's an older water softener and then maybe they used a rock salt at some period of time, or it can even be a relatively new water softener that's had debris inside the brine tank. And again, it could be rock salt and that kind of thing. It's sucked up um, some of those uh, small rocks and they've accumulated inside that little orifice. So all you need to do is 
open it up, clean it out. Now, because this orifice inside here is in a, a rubber, it's in a piece of rubber, I suggest you don't use something metal to pry the, the dirt out of there. Uh, a wooden toothpick is usually works best. And once you've cleaned that brine line flow control, you also need to clean out the brine tank of your water softener because there's dirt in there. You don't want to have suck out more dirt and cause the same problem again. How do you prevent it in the future? Don't use rock salt. Use um, pellet type salt with a cleaner already in the pellet. So the most likely reason why you've got too much water in the brine tank is because your injector is clogged. So this is the injector from a clack water softener. So there's a very, very small hole in the middle there. And if that hole becomes clogged, then it can't suck the brine out, but it does add more water to the brine tank. So what you need to do is you need to either replace or clean out that clogged injector. And once again, I've got a great YouTube video that shows you how to access, how to clean, and how to replace that injector on the Clack WS1 valve water softeners. I'll put a link in the description down below. And I'll also put a link in the description on where you can get the replacement injectors. So the next thing I would do would be manually go through a regeneration cycle just to make sure that it goes through every cycle as it should. If there's a problem with the circuit board, it won't know what cycle to go through and it won't know what order to go through them and it may actually skip a cycle. So if it's skipping a cycle, then I would definitely replace that circuit board. If it's an older water softener, it may be time for a new water softener. I've got a great programming video for uh, clack water softeners and again, I'll put a link in the description down below. So remember early on I was talking about putting the water softener through a cycle and then check to see if the water level drops after it's gone through a full cycle and then slowly creeps up or if it just stays at a high level. So if you found that after it's gone through a regeneration cycle the water level drops and then you check it the next day or the next day and you see that the water level is slowly going up that means you've got a leak somewhere in the system. And uh, depending on the water softeners like I know some of the Aquamaster and Water Boss water softeners they have basically a couple pieces that are wedged together to form that valve. And if some of the screws are a little bit loose, you might just get the slightest little trickle of water that keeps adding to the water in the brine tank, and that's when the level uh, starts going up. So if you've got a one-piece water softener, I definitely check for leaks within the, the, uh, the components of the valve in terms of how they're attached together. Just go over the screws and make sure they're all tight. If you have a two-piece water softener, or one piece I guess, and the water level keeps rising, then you've got a problem. Water is leaking past the piston. And what I'm talking about here is, this is the piston that goes inside the valve. This is from a clack valve water softener. And uh, so this is the main piston and this is the brine piston. And it fits inside this seal pack. This is a seal pack. So it fits inside like this. So as you can see, it's a fairly tight fit in there. As they get older or as they've accumulated debris, Within, within the, the valve itself, water can start leaking past the seals in this, uh, so in this um, seal pack, sorry. And uh, so the remedy for that is to replace the pistons and the seal. And once again, I've got a great YouTube video that shows you how to replace that seal pack and the pistons step by step. I'll put a link in the description down below. I'll also put a link that you can get the replacement parts from our websites, either watereastore.ca in Canada or watereastore.com in the U.S. Click here for your next video on water softeners, and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below. I read them all, and I'd love to answer yours.